Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope that I'm audible and clear. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome to today's mentoring hour. And um, oh, yeah, there's a confirmation that the aud audio is clear. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so today we will actually be having uh, Pastor Paul Emmanuel sharing with us on the topic of free will. It's a most interesting topic, and I'm sure you know we'll all learn much. So if we could have anyone uh, open with a word of prayer, please, uh, we can then get started. So if any one student could just unmute and uh, begin with a word of prayer, please. Um, Shri Radha, if you have logged in, could you please open with a word of prayer for us? Can you hear me, Pastor? Yes. Okay. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. And uh, when Pastor Paul will lead us uh, in this topic, you guide him, you lead him, and um, give us the clear picture of the free will, God. And we surrender every student, every faculty. It's in your hand. We surrender this day into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Shri Radha. Yeah. Pastor Paul, uh, if you could lead us in this topic. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Devika. All right. So uh, this week, we we be talking about uh, free will. And um, let me just present uh, what I prepared here. And so when we when we talk about free will, uh, the first thing that comes to us is choices. Right, uh, the choices that we make, uh, and no matter which phase of life we are in, we will make choices. Right. So, when we look at the book of Genesis, when God created us, uh, one of the marks of a human being when God created us was He gave us the ability to choose. Right. Uh, so when God created us, He didn't, you know, He didn't create us, create us to just uh, obey everything that He says. Right. In Genesis two seventeen, He says, uh, uh, "But you must not eat of the tree of uh, of of uh, of knowledge, because the day you do it, uh, the day you eat, you will die." So God, we see that God put Adam and Eve in the garden and gave them the choice. Right. And we know the story. They disobeyed and there were consequences for that. Right. So what is free will? Uh, uh, you know, each one of us have used this right in our life uh, knowingly or even unknowingly. Uh, free will is the power to decide what you will do in a situ certain situation. Right. Uh, it, it, the, the right and the ability to choose which direction we will go. And what we will do, right? So uh, each one of us, uh, you know, whether we are believers, whether we are unbelievers, whether we are working professionals, no matter where we are and what phase of life we are in, free will is an innate quality which God has already put in us. And when God created mankind, He gave us this unique, uh, you know, we can call it as a gift, the gift of free will. Uh, and 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 so we must also understand that free will is limited by nature. So uh, how how do we say that, right? Now, for example, um, you know, if I want to, you know, go to a certain place, I can't say, hey, let me fly there. It's it's not possible because it is we are limited by nature, right? So free free will is limited by nature as well. Man received a free will so that you and I make our own choices. And the choices that we make are many times um, influenced by the environment that we live in. It's influenced by our worldview. It's influenced by our peers, our upbringing, our surroundings, our friends, our families. Uh, and 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 while we have this ability to make decisions and walk in free will we must also understand that with the power of choice comes 
the consequences of our choices, right? Uh, so let's just uh, look at a few scriptures here. First Corinthians 10, 23, Paul is writing to uh, the Corinthian church. Now, uh, this church, as we know, is a church that is, um, you know, flowing in the gifts. Uh, but there was one of the problems was there were there were different groups in the in the church. And here Paul is saying, you say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial, right? Galatians 5.13, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another, right? Uh, and Mark 8.34, uh, that he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves take up their cross and follow me. Now, all these verses, and there are plenty of verses in the scriptures, uh, which directly and indirectly uh, show us that you and I, as as believers, as, uh, as, we, as, as people, we walk with this gift of free will, right? Uh, and, and so let's look at a, a few more, four examples on free will. There are plenty of examples. I've just picked up four, uh, and, and let's just uh, talk about this and uh, learn from this, right? Uh, so one, we have free will to decide who we will serve. Now, this is very interesting. Joshua 24, uh, very common verse. Uh, and we have it always uh, you know, on our doorposts of, the houses, of our houses. Uh, 24, 14, and 15. The context to this verse is beautiful. Uh, I'll just read this verse. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors. Worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if, serve, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your, your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Uh, now, this is a ex powerful example of free will. You know, God has brought the people out of Egypt uh, and he has shown the Egyptian, the, the Israelites have seen his mighty works, right? They've seen miracles uh, in their own eyes. Yet, uh, in the desert, they decide to turn back against God, right? And and uh, there came a point when they said, uh, uh, you know, when, when when they sent the 12 spies uh, to go scout the land of Pena, the promised land, and they came back. When the 10 of them gave the feedback that okay, this they, there are giants there. We cannot go and destroy them. The response to that was some of them said uh, they were willing to stone Moses and also go and and said, "Well, let's choose a leader and go back to Egypt." Right? Uh, it came to that point, and now Joshua they've entered Seshem, which is in a, uh, the Promised Land, and Joshua is giving them a command, and he's saying, "Okay, you have a choice. You have the God." whom your ancestors served. You have the God of the Amorites. Now, you have the choice. When you get into, when we enter this promised land, who, whom are you going to serve? And Joshua sums it all by saying, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So even you and I, you know, God gives us the free will on who we will serve, no matter, uh, you know, uh, uh, where we are in our life, what, what phase of life we are in, we have the free will to decide who we will serve. Right? We also have the free will to decide if we obey or disobey. Deuteronomy 28, uh, 1 through 8 says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord. Now, uh, I'm sure most of us have read Deuteronomy 28. And in 28, the first, I think it's about 12, 13 verses are, if you obey the Lord, these are the blessings that will follow you. You will be blessed when you go out. You will be blessed when you come. And blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. Blessed shall be uh, uh, your barns. And, uh, you, you know, there's a whole list of blessings. 
And then when you continue to read Deuteronomy 28, it says, but if you disobey, there's a whole list of uh, consequences that is uh, mentioned in that same chapter, right? And so as believers, uh, you know, it is our responsibility, it's our free will, whether we decide to obey or disobey God, whether we decide to obey our leaders or we disobey, God, disobey, right? Now, remember we talked about every decision we make has consequences. When we obey, the blessings of God will follow us. But when we disobey, we open our lives to the works of the enemy and the enemy is able to uh, bring in confusion and disorder in our life. And thirdly, we have free will to decide between life or death. Right? Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live, that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give you give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Again, very similar, right? When you when we uh, the, the decisions that we make, when we talk about free will, we can choose between living in a, an abundant life or choosing to, you know, uh, to disobey, which will lead us to uh, the, the, the things of the enemy. Right? And, and, and fourthly is we have the free will to decide what we speak. A very common uh, verse that we all use is Proverbs 18.21, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So these are just four points. And if you look at our lives, in every area of our life, we have the gift of free will. We have uh, the ability to make our own choices, right? And, and, so, uh, and so as believers, how can you and I make the right choices? And uh, how can you and I know that you know, I'm using the free will that God has given me. I'm using it the right way. And we, we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit, uh, we learn, is our helper. He's our guide. He's our mentor. He makes us, he, he leads us into all truth. Uh, and he, the gift, one of the gifts of the Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So one way that you and I as believers uh, can know that the decisions that I'm making or the, uh, uh, and the, the gift of free will that I'm using it in the right manner is to see if what I'm, the decisions that I make, is it in line with God's word? Or is it in, in is it, are the principles that I'm, whatever I'm doing, is it in line with the principles of God? Right. Then we just want to talk about a little bit about predestination versus free will. Now, the moment we talk about predestination, uh, you know, it just unpacks uh, a whole lot of uh, questions, a whole lot of theologies and different dogmas that may come up. Uh, but we're not going to dive too deep into predestination. I just want to give you a summary on what predestination is. And um, uh, you know, just compare that to free will. Predestination is is a paradox of free will. So, free will is God created us where we, with free will, we make our own decisions. Um, predestination is the belief that all our events have been planned and decided by God in advance. Right? Uh, there are two scriptures which talk about predestination. Uh, let's look at these two scriptures, right? Romans 8, 29 and 30. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also 
glorified. Right? Um, Ephesians 1 11. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in the conformity, in conformity with the purpose of his will. Now, when we look at predestination and we look at free will, it's it, it's almost the opposite because predestination is something that God has already decided in advance. And we look at free will where we see that uh, God gives us free will and says, okay, you make your own decisions. Uh, uh, but here, predestination, uh, from these two verses, we can infer that when you and I as believers, we, you know, make a decision to accept the Lord. Right? We, we say, okay, God, these are the things in my life. And we pray, we ask God for forgiveness, we receive salvation. That is our prayer. That is our, our decision. But what are we predestined to when Paul is referring to in these two verses is that as believers, when we accept the Lord, we are predestined to be sons and daughters we are predestined to uh, uh to be uh, to be you know uh, uh, to be adopt predestined to adoption we are predestined according to his purpose we are predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so the question that some of us may ask is uh so has god already decided who is saved and who is not, who will be saved and who will not be saved now we do know that God is a sovereign God, right? He can overrule uh, our decisions, but uh, but He also is a God who respects in our free will, right? Uh, so so it's it's a there's a thin line to understand predestination and free will, uh, but I want to close with this to uh, to understand that the free will that God is giving us. Uh, impacts our life and the decisions that we make. Uh, and so as believers, you and I must be responsible uh, for the decisions that we make and be wise in the decisions that we make. And uh, I love God to be I love God to lead us in uh, the things that we do. So uh, I'll close now and um, can open it up for questions. Over to Pastor Deepika. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that. Um, so if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask on this specific topic of free will, uh, you can unmute yourselves and go ahead. Uh, if you would prefer to type in the chat, that also should be fine. Uh, so any questions at all, any doubts, any clarifications on this particular topic of free will, uh, please go ahead. This is your time. Anyone who has any questions, uh, Go ahead and post your questions. Um, can I just add something to the last point of free destination? Yes, yes, yes Pastor, please. Uh, just to clarify so that students are not left confused, there is a big difference between predestination and our free will, meaning like when Paulie said there's a thin line, I, I don't think you should say there's a thin line. There's a big difference. Uh, we should understand predestination in Romans 8, 29 and 30 very clearly. Uh, Paul says, them whom he foreknew, he predestined. So predestination is not predetermination. It is foreknowledge of God. So predestination is God foreknew of a choice. Our choice is still our choice, so it's a very clear difference. Our choice is still a, our choice, but the predestination is the foreknowledge of God. It's a pre, it's not predetermination, but it's the foreknowledge of God. God knew in advance who, who will make the choice to say yes to his salvation and no to his salvation. For them, he had a plan, which is, okay, for all those who say yes, my plan for all of you is that you will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ and that you will go about fulfilling my purpose. So I think a, 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 a clear way, a way to make it very clear in our minds is Romans 8, 
29 and 30, that predestination is the foreknowledge of God. It is still our free will through which we make the decision to follow Jesus or not. And to all who say yes, God has pre-planned a set plan, which is all of us would be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So uh, if you put it that way, I think it makes it very clear. And it keeps both of these things in place, which is our free will, as well as God's plan, you know, a plan that he had before in mind uh, as sovereign God and what he would do to all who believe in Jesus. So the understand predestination is a foreknowledge of God. Uh, I think it makes it very clear in our minds to differentiate. I hope that helps. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, please go ahead with your questions. Um, Yeah, we have a question from Nedel um, on how we can receive the anointing and grow in it. Pastor Paul, uh, if you could take the question, please. Yes, Nedel, thank you for the question. Uh, uh, so the the word anointing is is uh, the the presence of God, the glory of God, to be uh, filled with God's. Uh, presence and and so when you uh, look at scriptures um, uh, I'm just going to give you a few practical ways on how we can uh, you know uh, the Bible says that this the Holy Spirit is the spirit of anointing he anoints us by the Holy Spirit right so when you and I uh, can spend time in prayer uh, reading God's word uh, and when we do these, uh, when we pray, read God's word, when we uh, spend time, uh, you know, in God's presence, uh, the anointing, that is the presence of glory of God, uh, falls upon us. Now, all of us are already anointed, right? Uh, uh, and there are different levels of anointing, um, and we grow from level to level. And uh, so prayer spending time in God's presence, reading of God's word um, uh, can really help us to grow in the anointing of God. Uh, so I'll leave it open to others to so give their thoughts, please. Um, thank you, Paul. I'll just add a few of my thoughts regarding um, how, how to get the anointing uh, and uh, then grow in it. So uh, when we look at 1 John 2, 27, it talks about the anointing which we have received uh, from God, which abides in us. So uh, as Pastor Paul said, the anointing is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So from this um, scripture, we see that when we become believers, God gives us his presence in us by the Holy Spirit. Uh, it dwells in every believer. So everyone who believes the presence of God dwells um, in us uh, and you know uh, the presence of the holy spirit is with us to lead us guide us so uh, this is the anointing within us but then there is something known as the anointing upon us or the empowering of god that comes upon us to do the work that god has called us to do um, as in acts 1 8 we know that you know when we are baptized in the holy spirit then the anointing comes upon us and then we are able to um, you know go ahead and do the works of power uh, uh, you know empowered by the holy spirit so uh, just these two scriptures that i wanted to bring to our knowledge uh, nadel so one is when we become believers all of us receive the presence indwelling presence of the holy spirit but we receive the empowering presence of the holy spirit when we are baptized in the holy spirit so 
this is uh, how we receive it. Uh, but then, of course, we have to grow in it and develop it. Thank you. If anyone else would like to add uh, further to this question, and in the meantime, if others can you know, post their question. Yes, we do have a question here um, from Sanjay. If we as believers are predestined to be confirmed to the image of Christ, would that mean that there are those who are predestined to be confirmed to an image that is not of Christ? If so, what hope do these people have? Pastor Paul, if you could address this question. Okay. Uh, so just as uh, Pastor Ashi shared with us, uh, you know, the moment we say yes to the call or, or, or we say yes to Jesus, we accept him uh, as believers, uh, we are conformed, we are conforming to the image of Christ, right? Uh, so for those who are, you know, God's will is that all of us be saved. Right. So uh, it's not God's will that this person should not be saved. So for so to look at it, to say that, OK, those who are uh, uh, not predestined. So when God looks at it, he wants to see all of us saved. So uh, so the question of uh, if, if we are not if we don't believe in or we don't receive salvation, uh, we know that we're, you know, there's, we're still open to the works of the enemy, uh, but uh, that's where you know the grace of God comes. That uh, no matter uh, you know how bad we sin or what we're doing, uh, when we believe, He He accepts us, and uh, and so no one is too far away uh, from receiving forgiveness and coming into uh, you know believing in the Lord Jesus. So. Um, but if we don't, if we say no, we don't want to believe in it, then uh, you know the consequences uh, are also there. For you know, we we may not live in line with God's word. We are not obeying God. We are not honoring God in our life. Uh, uh, Pastor, would you like to add a few thoughts on this, Pastor? Please. Sure. So Sanjay, um, so there is predestination. And there is also predisposition. That means a default state in which every human being is born. That means, uh, and, and the references will be Romans chapter 5, Romans 5, Romans 5, 12, and I'm just typing it, Ephesians 4, 17 to 19. So, sorry. Uh, so this is uh, the predisposition, the predisposed state in which every human person is born, which is every man born of Adam, every person born of Adam is born in sin, right? For by one man sin entered the world, death passed through all men, all men have sinned. Uh, Ephesians 4.17 says, by default, we are all alienated from the life of God. So that's our default state, which we will say it's a predisposition. We are born into that because of Adam's sin. So that's what is working in every person who doesn't know Jesus, right? Now, that is not God's will. That was not predetermined by God, but that came as the choice of man, the free will of man, right? So God didn't predetermine that every person should be, con be living in darkness and living in sin. That was not God's predetermination. It was a choice made by God which resulted in this predisposition. So the psalmist said, you know, in, I was born in sin. In sin did my mother conceive me. So that's the default state for every person. And for all of us, we were born that way. And the hope is given to us in Christ, meaning I can, we can move out of this, pre, uh, this predisposed state of darkness, of living without the life of God, of living in subjection to sin, Satan, and death, and transition into the plan of God which is for us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So that helps us clearly understand that. But keep in mind, the predisposed state is not the will of God. That's not God's original plan. It came in because of um, the fall of man. And so there's a great hope for every person to transition into uh, being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Um... Is there any follow-up question that you would like to ask? 
uh, Sanjay, or uh, otherwise we can move on to the next question. Yeah, Nedal has a question here. Um, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, regarding the spiritual gifts, is it in our part to choose the gifts we want, or is it God's prerogative? Pastor Paul, if you could take up the question, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Nadel, once again for that question. Uh, right, uh, so 1 Corinthians 12, uh, um, uh, Paul uh, Paul is writing to the believers who are already flowing in all the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, now, we know that God gives, the, the gifts are all given by God. Uh, and we, as you know, if we go towards the end of that verse, he, he says, earnestly desire the best gift. Uh, and so what is that best gift? Uh, so when the Holy Spirit comes into us, he comes with all nine gifts. And you and I must uh, you know, use the gift that is needed at the right time. So uh, I think a perfect example would be if, 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 if somebody is um, you know, in the hospital uh, unwell, uh, you know, the, uh, there's no use of uh, you know, the, the first gift that I would want is to uh, ask the Holy Spirit for either the gift of healing or the working of miracles, right? Uh, or, or the gift of faith to uh, for the person to receive healing. So, uh, so when after Paul lists the whole, he puts on the whole list, he says, earnestly desire the best gift. It is to use the appropriate gift at the right time. So, the gifts are all with us, and our pastor's written it in his book also. The books are like a toolbox, right? And uh, uh, just like how an electrician uses the right tool for the right uh, work that he's doing, uh, uh, he may use different tools for doing the same kind of work. Uh, so the same way, the Holy Spirit comes with nine gifts. We use the right gift at the right situation or the right time. And God is willing to to give it to us. Right? It, it is God who has given us all nine. And then uh, we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to uh, you know, uh, manifest that gift at the right you know, situation or the season that we are in. So uh, Nadel, I hope that answers your question. And uh, feel free to, for the other pastors to please share as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, does anyone want to share their thoughts on this? Uh, any of the faculty want to add to what has already been said? Any other questions that um, you'd either like to unmute and ask, or you can post in the chat? If you have any questions on any other topic as well, uh, please feel free to ask. Yeah, we have a question here from Jacqueline. Um, a person accepts Jesus and is saved but chooses to live an unsurrendered life, then will their consequences still be in God's control, meaning God will pursue them and bring them back on track according to live their lives according to his purposes? So Jackin's question is, will the Lord um, pursue that unsurrendered person and bring them back? Or are they left to their free will? I suppose is the you know implication there, uh, Pastor Paul. If you could answer this question, yes. Uh, thank you, Jackin, for that question. Now, uh, now since the example says that person accepts Jesus and is saved, so we know that the Holy Spirit is there in that person, right? And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is dwelling inside, but uh, he or she may not have been uh, obedient to the. To the call of the Holy Spirit and uh, or, or the be obedient to God's word and you know, gone away from the things of God, uh, but even in that case, the Holy Spirit is not going to go off. 
right? He's not going to leave. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there, reminding. Uh, so no matter how far away, uh, no matter how evil a person may turn, uh, but the Holy Spirit is still there, bringing conviction. Uh, uh, and so if the person is uh, still hard-hearted and saying, no, I don't want to believe in it, um, you know, there's nothing, the Holy Spirit is like a dove, right? So uh, again, he's not going to pounce on somebody and forcefully ask them to believe in Jesus. And uh, uh, But he brings conviction. And, uh, and so if we are not obedient to it, we open our lives to the work of the enemy. Uh, but up to the end of his, his or her life, the Holy Spirit will keep reminding, will keep pursuing, will keep uh, trying to bring them back keep reminding them you know uh that you know uh you, that there's a god and you are god's child and uh and so to answer your question jack uh yes the holy spirit is in that person and he will continue to try and bring this person back to christ uh but again uh if we choose not to do it then all we're doing is we're opening our lives to the work of the enemy so uh I hope that answered your question, Jacken. I'd leave it open to the other faculty as well. Thank you. So yes, Jacken, if you have a follow-up question, you can post it here. Uh, and in the meantime, if we could uh, take up Gertrude's question. Uh, Gertrude wants to know, uh, when we pray, some people are healed and some are not. Is it God's will or is it because we were not well equipped? You know that the person did not get saved and uh, she also um yeah pastor if you could take up that question first uh yeah um uh, there are you know uh, let me see um there are obviously the spiritual uh, you know if you want to put it in different categories you can think about the spiritual side, the the ability. Okay, maybe I should. Okay, let's look at the biblical reference. First Timothy chapter three, uh, verses one through eight, where the apostle Paul uh, he gives out all the skill sets. If you want to use the word that word, uh, practical skill sets for those who um, are leading God's people. And so in that, you will find uh, the spiritual side, which is uh, the ability to minister God's word. And then there's a lot of practical side, which is uh, um, uh, ability to lead at the house of God, lead people, work with people. And then there is a personal side, which is self-governing or you're managing yourself your own family your own household and so on so uh, if you look at that in first timothy 3 1 through 8 you can categorize put it broadly in these three categories there is your know, things that uh, a, a spiritual leader a pastor must have to govern himself or his, herself as a, as a spiritual leader take care of your own self uh, your own self-discipline your own house your own family then there is the people skills that is basically your ability to work with people uh, you are caring for the people leading guiding nurturing people um, you know you, you you're patient with people all of those things and then there is the um the spiritual the gift set which is the ability to minister the word of god and so on um so that's it i mean that's of course a high level overview uh, personal people and the spiritual which is ministering god's word and the power of the holy spirit um now you can drill down into each of these and you can itemize it you know you can put it down further uh, which uh, maybe we shouldn't do it now but we can think through on that thank you pastor uh Nedel has a question uh, she asks, what are some of the practical skills, uh, a sk practical skill set that a pastor must possess to be effective in ministry? Um, 
this is not a question related to free will. So if any of the faculty could uh, answer, um, what should be the practical skill set that a pastor must possess to be effective in ministry? Um, pastor Deepika, I, uh, okay. pastor I guess I, was, I answered that question. That question. Right. Oh, OK, I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, we shall move on to the next question uh, then. Pastor Deepika, I think we missed yeah. um, uh, Gertrude's question, where uh, I think you had called that out. You said, when we pray, some people are healed and some are not. Is it God's will mm -hmm. or we are not well equipped? So I think that question we haven't uh, addressed yet. Sorry if, I'm, if I made a mistake in answering the wrong question. Uh, uh, no problem, Pastor. Pastor, I'll just yeah. share my view, like in a uh, just a very short way. So, Sister Gertrude, um, when we look at the work of Jesus on the cross, we know that you know He has carried our sicknesses, um, and it has brought healing to uh, our whole person. And uh, so, when you ask the question, "Is it God's will for?" us to be healed um, as far as the work of the cross is concerned we concerned we know that healing is part of it and so yes it is god's will for us to be healed uh, now why don't we see it manifest at all times there are many factors that we can talk about um, so uh, you know maybe because of one certain reason uh, somebody did not actually see the fulfillment of that healing but is it in the uh, is it provided by god for us yes at all times it is god's will for us to be healed i think we can learn more about this from our apc publication uh, ministering healing and deliverance and i would refer you to uh, that book it'll be able to i mean we'll be able to gain a more detailed knowledge about the question that you have uh, asked. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, we have a question from Shiv Kumar, uh, who would like to know whether a person with an unsaved family can be a pastor and lead a church. Uh, again, this is open to all the faculty, uh, if anyone would like to answer this particular question. Yes, I'll just add a thought. Uh, yes, thank you, Shiv Kumar, for the question. Uh, now, uh, now, I believe that if somebody, if God has called somebody to be a pastor, uh, he or she must pursue that call and fulfill that call uh, because it's that person's personal calling or that's what God wants him or her to do. Uh, but when it comes to a place where this person is in an unsafe family, he really, he or she must really walk in wisdom, um, like uh, you know, just practically know how to go about, uh, you know, starting, um, uh, you know, uh, set certain guidelines, or you can probably share with the family. So there's a lot of practical aspects that are involved because uh, the unsafe family may not be. Uh, may not agree with what you want to do and uh, uh, and so it's always good to share your thoughts share the your thoughts of you know starting the church and you know they may be for it they may be against it uh, uh, but i believe that if god has called a person from an unsaved family uh, and and this person is saved and uh, he won't and god is calling him to be a pastor and lead a church he must pursue that call uh, uh, yeah so leave it open to the others please Pastors. Thank you, Pastor. Anyone else wants to add their thoughts? Anyone from the faculty would like to add to this, please? Okay, any other questions uh, on any topic? Any questions that any of the students would like to ask the faculty? Please go ahead. We have a few minutes left, or else we can close. So if anyone has any question, 
um, please go ahead right now. All right, then in that case, maybe we can close. Uh, if any one student could, you know, um, close and then uh, with, with a word of prayer, and then, you know, we can uh, end the session. So if anyone could just close with a word of prayer, please, uh, we can end the session after that. Mm, on my screen, I have an Stephen Alexander. Stephen Alexander, if you could, you know, unmute and uh, close with a word of prayer, please. Okay, he is not in the. He's not logged in at the moment. I'll, I'll um, just pray, Pastor. Heavenly Father, called. we just uh, thank you for this uh, hour of mentoring, and we pray, Father, that uh, whatever we have learned, Father, we will be able to retain and apply it in our lives, Father. We pray, Lord, that thy word will continue to guide us and lead us, Father. And we pray that we'll also be sensitive to thy Holy Spirit, Father, to be more effective as uh, ambassadors of thy word, Father. We, we pray for a blessing upon our entire faculty and all the students, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, so yes, we can now go to our classes. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.